You are invited to a virtual event for Christian female professional leaders who struggle with low energy, belly bloat, and foggy thinking, and want to take back their midlife health with clarity and calm confidence. I am calling it Take Back Your Midlife Health, and it is happening February 13th through the 15th. Inside this exclusive workshop, you will learn simple, doable, and faith-fueled steps to go from feeling frumpy, foggy, and fatigued to clear, energized, and more balanced in your wellness journey. Listen, I know you are inundated with all the things out there about midlife health and wellness. Try this workout, count your macros, eat this, no, no, eat that. Take this supplement to help your hormones. You are following all the gurus on social media and you are barely putting a dent into your low energy levels. You are still worried about your foggy brain and still frustrated with that belly bloat that drives you crazy every single morning as you get dressed. So I invite you to choose a different way, God's way. Lean into him and discover the woman inside you that he created you to be. Stop the striving, stop the doing, and just be. So come on inside the Take Back Your Midlife Health Workshop where you will learn how to regain your energy, reduce your belly bloat, and renew your foggy brain naturally. Day one, you will learn how to fuel up nutritionally to help your body begin to recover. Day two, you will learn fun and healthy movements that you can do even while you are tired that will help you and not harm you. Day three, you will begin to plan with a purpose as you map out your sleep routine for better and more restorative sleep. Now is the right time to take back your midlife health so that 2024 is a year your wellness is in your hands. Take back that daily exhaustion. No more kicking the lab test can down the road until your numbers show you are getting sicker. No more wait and see approach to your peri or menopausal wellness. No more one size fits all diet mentality. So save your seat now. It is completely free until February 12th. So make sure you go to the link in the show notes to save your seat. I can't wait to see you there. As a Christian working woman over 40, are you struggling with consistently low energy and tiredness, but sick of the confusing midlife info out there? Are you tired of that menopausal belly bloat and worried you will always have that annoying brain fog feeling? Been there. But right here is where you get clarity and hope through biblical and holistic health solutions. Hi, I'm Michelle, holistic health coach and fellow midlifer. As the heartbeat of your home, decide right now in this season to partner with God with discipline, intentionality, and commitment to changing your life at midlife. If you're ready to stop chasing the world's way of health and be your healthiest whole self with more energy and less brain fog than you have had in a while, then you're in the right place. Grab your herbal tea, Bible, notebook, and pen, and let's treasure your wellness. Hi there. Welcome back to Treasured Wellness. I'm your host, Michelle, and I am so glad that you are here with me today as we talk about fatigue, anxiety, and stress. We are talking about why your health may be under a spiritual attack. So if you are feeling like your constant daily fatigue, your anxiety and your stress is your norm, like this has become the normal part of your day of your life, this is something to consider. Your health may be under a spiritual attack. It could be your mental health, your physical health, both, certainly your spiritual health. So... Do you remember that movie Groundhog Day? Do you ever feel like your life is an episode in the movie Groundhog Day? That movie where Bill Murray is stuck in that time loop where he wakes up with each day being exactly the same, right? Today being Groundhog Day where many people look to the infamous groundhog who basically predicts the end of winter by either seeing or not seeing his shadow. You know, it, the saying goes, if he comes out of his hole on a clear day and he sees his shadow, 
it, he will retreat and there will be six more weeks of winter. Okay. If he doesn't see a shadow, then spring is going to arrive early. Yay! And that tradition originated in the Pennsylvania Dutch. And the very first Groundhog Day was celebrated in 1887. Fun fact for you. At Gobbler's Knob in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Say that five times fast. But some of you have told me that you feel like you will always feel tired. You will always struggle with your daily chronic fatigue. You will always need to run hot water over your knuckles every single morning in order to get them to loosen up and not be so painful. That is a true story too. You will always wake up in pain and feeling still so tired, even though you may have slept for seven hours. Some of you have told me that you have constant anxiety but yet the medications that you are on don't really help and actually make you feel worse. And when you talk to your doctor about your fatigue, your medication either gets changed or increased. The other thing I hear from some of you is that you will be able to focus better and really focus more intently on your health when you are finally able to retire. Does any of this sound familiar to you? Let me assure you, friend, you do not have to wait until retirement for you to start feeling good, for you to start feeling well, for you to be well, for you to wake up with more energy, for you to wake up with less pain and feel truly rested, actually feel rested when you wake up in the morning, to feel peace in your heart and in your soul and less stress, to be confident as a daughter of the king in your whole wellness, your physical, your mental, and your spiritual wellness. Because those lies that you are telling yourself are lies from the enemy. See, he whispers lies to you that you have so much time to take care of your health. And anyway, isn't it selfish to put yourself first I mean, really, come on, at the end of the day, it's really selfish to focus on you because as a good Christian girl, you need to be others focused, constantly giving and constantly serving and constantly doing, right? Lies. Yes, we are to love God and love others. Yes, 100%. But we are also supposed to love ourselves as we love our neighbor. Are we doing that when our health is down the toilet. Are we doing that when we don't give ourselves any drops in our bucket, when our bucket is completely empty, but yet we continue to pour out? Are we truly loving ourselves as we love our neighbor? We're not. Some of my clients have wasted years listening to those lies of the enemy and have finally found freedom in Jesus and in their way of living and in Jesus's way, really, of living a healthy life, having a healthy lifestyle. I myself have wasted so many years of my life not doing kingdom work, not believing in who I am as a daughter of the king because I listened to those lies of the enemy for far too long. See, Satan likes to whisper to us that we are much more productive. If we keep going, we keep pushing through, then, then, then we can rest. When all the work is finished, we can relax. We can go watch a movie. We can go have a beach day when the work is finished. The lie from the world is that multitasking and being stressed and being overworked is really like a badge of honor. Like we should wear that like a bad badge of honor. What is it that everyone says when you greet them? Like, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm so busy. Busy, 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 busy. We have busyness syndrome. We have busyness syndrome. What is all that stress and multitasking and overworking really accomplishing? 1 Corinthians 6.12, I love 1 Corinthians 6.12 and I want to read from the NIV because it just, it just um, 
I mean, I love all the versions of this. I just love this passage. But I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 6, 12 from the NIV. I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. I have the right. God gives us free will. He gives us a choice. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you give us free will, that you give us a choice, that we are not just a bunch of minions running around following you like little mini robots. You give us a choice. We have the right to do anything. But is it really serving you? Is it really helping you? Not everything is beneficial. Not everything is beneficial. Okay, sure. You can push through the day, your busy day running on fumes. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt a hundred times. <laughs> you can get all the things done in your to-do list. You can run to that meeting, tackle that product project. You can organize the next office event. You can do all of the things, wearing a smile, looking beautiful and put together on the outside. But is it benefiting you? Is it truly benefiting you? Is it filling your soul? Is it helping you with your exhaustion? Is it helping you with your stress? Is it helping you with your anxiety? Is it helping you? Absolutely not. I don't know about you, but I have found for me personally, I have found that I am actually less productive the more I strive, the more I keep striving. My brain shuts down, it gets really overwhelmed, and my body physically feels exhausted like my arms are too heavy. And if I don't listen to my body after a while, it will literally throw me into an adrenal fatigue flare or an autoimmune flare. Then how accomplished do I feel, right? How accomplished do you feel when you are forced to be in bed or on the couch because you ignored your body's signals to slow down and rest. Wouldn't it be better for you to rest when you aren't forced to so you can actually enjoy it? I was talking with my husband about that just the other day, you know, because I was forced to rest because once again, I pushed through and this is something that the Lord has been working with me on for two years now. So, you know, grace upon grace, right? Because what is hardwired in our brain takes time, discipline, patience, discipline, <laughs> intentionality to rewire, to renew our minds, right? It takes time and it takes putting it into practice. So I would much rather be still, enjoy the Sabbath, enjoy my rest when I didn't feel sick. When I wasn't in an autoimmune flare, when I wasn't in an adrenal, adrenal fatigue flare, I don't have to be. I'm putting myself there. I'm doing it on purpose. Why? Because there are times where we all, because we're human, we get caught up in the should do's, the to-do list. I have to. I can't until I. All of that thing. And the world gives us such a mixed message, right? Right? You know, work hard, work hard, work hard. Don't rest until you get done. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Take time for you. You deserve a break. You deserve to take that vacation. Mixed messages. The world says to be selfish and have that self-love mindset because after all, you are the creator of your own destiny. What? That's insanity. <laughs> So Satan takes the world's messaging and he twists it so that the Christian woman who is desperate to fill her bucket because it is bone dry and yet she keeps trying to pour out into others because that's what she's called to do and that's what her heart is. Her heart is to do for others and she feels guilty for taking time away alone to refill and refuel and rest and so then she feels shame for not caring for herself better because she knows she should but she doesn't want to be selfish and she has so much to do but she knows she should it's a double-edged sword right 
It doesn't matter the situation. Satan will use it against you. So friend, even when we know better, sometimes the enemy gets into our mind and his game is always the same. Attack the mind, cause doubt, worry, fear, shame. Always the same. If you have your Bible, turn to John 8, 44. John 8, 44. It says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Satan is the father of lies. And so he's always whispering lies to you to cause Fear, guilt, shame, doubt, worry, always. His method is the same. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings and see this is where the community the body of believers a community of like-minded women need to come together collaborate connect not competition not you know worrying about you know somebody's house looks better than the others or somebody got that promotion and, and you wanted it like none of that no enough is enough right like we need each other. We need the body of believers to help us to resist the enemy, help us to resist his ways and his lies. Corey Ten Boom says, if the devil can't make you bad, he will make you what? Busy. We can't ever forget his tricks. We can't ever forget how he wants us to fall, fail, and flounder but God. God tells us right from the beginning to be still, to rest, to take a Sabbath every single week. Why? I mean, aside from the obvious physical and mental benefits, it's so we can be restored spiritually too. We know that we're restoring ourselves when we take time to rest physically and mentally. But spiritually, we need it too, because when we are spiritually strong, we are strong in other areas of wellness. So taking time to just be with God, to be still with God, just be. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Just to be who God created you to be and be still with him, your creator. This restores us, it renews us, and it helps us to add another layer of armor to fight the devil with. Because a spiritual attack comes in many, many forms. Now I'm going to talk about three that really pertain to our whole health, and that is fatigue, anxiety, and stress. So if you are constantly struggling with any of these three areas, they are greatly affecting your health. And you know it, because you feel it, because you're living it, right? And they are affecting you on all three levels of your health, physical, mental, and spiritual. So I'm giving you a verse today for each area for you to write out, okay? You can post it on your mirror. You can post it on your computer monitor, somewhere that you will see it often throughout the day. And in my program, we talk about going through spiritual attacks in our health journey because the reality is that's what Satan wants. He wants you sad, sick, and stuck. He wants you to feel bad physically. He wants you stuck in your negative mental loop. He wants that always. And if you stay there, guess what? He wins. Because when you physically and mentally feel bad day in and day out, what is your human nature? to self-soothe, right? With food, drinks, TV, videos, social media, all things that are done repeatedly over time, really just 
pull you further and further away from the Lord. And then you don't get the health victory that God has for you when you go away with him, when you invite him into your well, wellness journey, your health journey, when you are truly with God in this life. So we need to work through that. And that's why we do that in our, in our program, because when we do the spiritual soul work, we come out stronger, bolder, and more confident. And that is the power of inviting God into your wellness. So consider that. Inviting God into your wellness, all areas of your wealth, your health. Okay, so fatigue. Let's look at Isaiah 40. Okay, this is, of course, one of my favorites. And there's a lot actually in the Bible about low energy and fatigue, about restoration of your fatigue. And I love 40, 28 verses 31. It says, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even the youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. There's a but there. We have to hope in the Lord in order for this to happen, right? I mean, we're human, so we're going to get tired. We're going to get weary. But if we hope in him, he will renew our strength. And in Matthew, of course, you know that verse in Matthew 11, 28, verses 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Why? Because coming to Jesus is our rest. He is our rest. He is our true rest. So when you are when you are exhausted, when you are chronically fatigued, and you could absolutely have a physical reason, you could have adrenal fatigue, and I talk about that on the podcast too, you could have a very overlooked medical condition that we need to get to the bottom of because you do not have to live your life this way. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you are 68 years old. You should not be chronically fatigued. Something is not right. Okay, so take this verse, take Matthew 11, and really apply it to yourself. Ask the Lord to show you where do I need to go next because I'm so exhausted and I am tired of being attacked by Satan in my exhaustion. Okay, let's move on to anxiety. Anxiety. When you're holding on to anxiety and worries, and you just can't shake them, it's a good indication that you are trying in your own strength. Ask me how I know this. <laughs> and you are really carrying what is God's to carry, not yours. Let me say that again. When you are holding on to anxiety and worries and you can't shake them, it is a good indication that you are trying in your own strength and you are carrying what, God, what is God's to carry. It's not yours. And it is making you sick. Proverbs 12, 25 says, anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. So true, right? How often do we feel so low and we feel physically sick and depleted when our anxiety takes over? And Isaiah 41, 10, I love, again, Isaiah, so much richness and wisdom in Isaiah. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Do not fear. God is with you. I love that verse so much. And then stress. Oh, how many people are walking around with chronic stress, which really affects you physically. Like that is what can truly bring on severe adrenal fatigue and chronic fatigue for sure. There's a reason why stress is the number one killer. 
So I love, again, we're in Isaiah, so just turn a few pages. Isaiah 46, verse 4. It says, even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. I love this verse as my hair is graying at lightning speed. But he is with you. He is with me. We can actually change our perception of the stress in our lives. It is definitely not looking at your stress the way the world looks at stress, but changing your perception of stress begins with a heart shift towards God, first and foremost. See, Satan wants to keep you, remember, sad, sick, and stuck. He wants to keep you anxious, scared, worried, stressed out. He wants you to turn to the world's way of soothing those feelings. Again, stress is the number one killer. And what is his game? To steal, kill, and destroy. John 10.10. 10. If Satan can take you out of this world, my friend, you cannot do kingdom work. You can't do that big thing that God has put on your heart. You can't serve your family, your community, your employees, your boss, your job, your company, you can't show them Jesus. You can't be the light of Jesus if you are gone. Stress and changing our perception of stress is a definite focus in the Midlife Health Makeover program because guess what? It's abundant. Stress is abundant. But I would love to see peace abundant in you, in God's daughters. And that is exactly what we work together towards with the weekly support and accountability. So again, if you are dealing with any one of or all of these three things, right? Fatigue, anxiety, stress. Push pause right now and seek the Lord for his wisdom. Ask him to show you where you are believing the enemy's lies and to reveal very personally, his truth over you. God is a very detailed God and he is very present in our time of need. So jot down whatever he tells you, a verse, a word, a phrase, maybe a song will come to your mind. Jot it down and date it for remembrance so you have that, okay? And don't forget to sign up for the Take Back Your Midlife Health we are having a wonderful workshop February 13th through the 15th. The link is in the show notes, and I would love to see you there. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, you tell us not to be anxious about anything. You tell us in your word to not fear. You tell us that you are right there with us. And Lord, this world is a mess, but you can do much with a mess, right? And Lord, you tell us you'll never leave us nor forsake us. So I just pray right now for the woman listening that, Lord, you would help her to take back her power and to lean into you and to do this life with you, God, and ignore the noise of the world. Help her to take every thought captive and think about the things that you tell her to think about. Father God, be so present in her life today. And we love you and we thank you for it's in Jesus' name, Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. I hope that was helpful. I hope that that was encouraging. I hope that it blessed you today. If it did, please share it with somebody else. And remember, you are a beautiful treasure. <laughs>